It's a windy day over here, so hopefully my microphone picks it up, but I'm at a BMW Media Day and I've got the chance to drive the BMW i3s, a 2020 model. Now, if you'd like more information, do check it out down in the description below. It'll be to our website. And also down there, you'll find a link to our Instagram. It's at totallyevnet. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's see how the 2020 model compares to my impressions of the 2013 model, which I previously reviewed. Now, aesthetically, I think the BMW i3s looks fantastic from the front you've got a sporty design and yes there are small size grills at the front unlike a lot of 2020 bmws nowadays on the side you've got 20 inch alloys and at the rear you've got kind of like a cut off design but yet it looks pretty premium on the whole i think that the bmw's execution over here hasn't really changed since 2013 and well why should it because well it looks really good at least in my subjective opinion so be intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments section below now into the interior of the car bmw have again retained the same sort of design philosophy and well again it's very premium looking it's very spacious both in terms of legroom and headroom both at the front and the rear there are four seats in total and also four doors as well the doors are operated slightly differently from what you'd normally be accustomed to that's because you have to open up the front door first before accessing the rear doors which might be a little bit of an issue if you've got kids and you're going to be jumping in and out of the vehicle but on the whole i don't think it'll be too much of a problem for a lot of individuals elsewhere the car has around 260 liters in terms of the boot which isn't bad pop down the seats and you get 1100 liters pretty spacious and something that would be pretty good for most people who want to fit in either uh, small size luggages without the seats down and if you pop down the seats large size luggages will fit with ease there's also compartmental storage on the doors whereby you can put in a 500 milliliter chili bottle and yes there's a bmw branded one over here which is great and you can fit in let's say a wallet or a purse the same could be said on a center console space is plentiful over here on the whole in terms of storage it's pretty nice as for the actual dashboard and the way that the car is from the interior the steering wheel feels really nice it feels premium the finish all the way around the dashboard feels great and in terms of the center console itself it, it can be adjusted as a uh, armrest making it a little bit more comfortable when you're going for little longer distance drives as for technology the infotainment display is very vivid although it's pretty far so you have to really reach to it although there is the circular dials by the center console allowing you to access that as well what i do also like is the positioning of the instrument cluster it's a digital one but the way it's positioned from the steering wheel and of course you can adjust the steering wheel position it makes it very easy to see it's also pretty bright as well so there's no complaints over here the only thing that will take getting used to for a lot of people is the gear lever the gear gear lever or should I say the gear selector is on the right hand side of the steering wheel think of an old school Cadillac you're not quite shifting it up and down but you're shifting it um, between the between the gears so there's drive park uh, reverse and neutral and you can uh, also uh, start and stop the car directly from this um, section over here too and now we get on to driving so here I am on some country roads and if I put my foot down the car responds really well what I would really say about the BMW i3 and the same experience I had with the 20 13 model is the fact that the throttle response is just pretty much pinpoint accurate now 0 to 60 is around 6.9 seconds top speed is limited to just around under 100 miles an hour and i think that will suffice for most people given that the car here that we're talking about is really aimed for city driving now as we're going to approach the national speed limit on country roads i can just put my foot down a little bit and take it around corners now the thing you might notice potentially i'm not sure if it'll come across on the video is the fact there's quite a bit of wind noise and tire noise that comes in and that's because of its relatively small tires and alloy wheels which are relatively large in other words the combination leads to a little bit more of tire noise and therefore if you're going to be driving on country roads like we are we're doing now and what we just did before then you'll find that the car well just suffers from a bit more road noise than you might be accustomed to which isn't exactly a great sign uh, specifically as um, the car itself is just otherwise really well pretty silent and well insulated the same could be said in terms of deflecting air off the a pillars you can hear it quite a bit due to its kind of 
I'll say bubble shaped design, but due to its kind of squarish design, in fact, um, you can hear a bit of wind noise coming in. So when you're driving on the motorway at say 70 miles an hour, you will hear wind deflecting off the A pillars and therefore might just lead to a little bit of a less comfortable drive. Speaking about comfort, the suspension is also pretty stiff, which is great if you're taking country roads at 50 miles an hour, but not so great when you're going over speed bumps, specifically in inner city routes where there's a lot of speed bumps generally, at least in London there is. What you'll find is that this i3 will feel a little bit more clunky while you're going over these speed bumps. So just something to be mindful about, um, specifically when you're comparing this car to some of its competitors. Now in terms of its price range, it is also another thing worth well kind of knowing and kind of noting about is the fact that this is a lot pricier than most of its competitors which offer either a more well a larger vehicle or have a longer more well, range speaking of range this car has around 180 miles of quoted range by at least from bmw given my short experience and this is a kind of first drive i can't really put my well I can't give you my input in terms of range now elsewhere when it comes to charging the vehicle you've got a type CSS and type 2 port should I say which therefore allows you to fast charge the vehicle as it uh, accepts a 50 kilowatt uh, charge therefore expect around a full charge in around an hour give or take um, just depending on your battery percentage there is regenerative braking which is very much something of a focal point specifically with the BMW i3 range and that's because when it first came out back in 2013 the harsh regenerative braking mode that you got was well took some people by surprise to say the least now here I think BMW have still maintained that level of regenerative braking and I've got no issue with it when it comes to driving an inner city route it's actually pretty natural and then recoups as much energy back into the battery pack as possible I also do like it on terms of the instrument cluster it shows you the e-power and the charge so therefore you can either drive very um, efficiently or indeed you can see when you're going to be recouping energy back into the battery pack and it's pretty responsive in this respect it seems to recoup as much energy as it possibly can so what are my first impressions on the BMW i3s well very much like the 2013 model it's got a lot going for it it's stylish it's pretty spacious okay it's got limited boot space but it's otherwise you know pretty comfortable to sit in it grips the road really well and from the exterior and even interior it looks and feels a bit premium the thing is here is that you are paying a hefty premium for that thirty-nine thousand pounds at least starting from thirty-nine thousand pounds for the i3s in comparison to what else you can get out there well you just might want to consider that if style is not all that important to you and you're not someone who's going to be taking this car around country roads at great speed then you might want to consider the Renault Zoe, the Nissan Leaf, uh, the VW E-Up, the Seat Mi Electric. I mean, there's so many to name in this kind of car, which are sub 200 mile type of range, if not a little bit more, and offer pretty much everything that you want, apart from the fact that it's not a BMW and doesn't have that kind of luxury look from the exterior and interior. So that's just my opinion about it and that's just my thoughts about it. Let me know in the comments below what you make of the i3s. Is it a car that you own, you were thinking of buying or is it a car that you just think is potentially a little bit too expensive? I'll be very much intrigued to hear your thoughts and uh, if you do like this video make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more and of course favorite and share as it'll always help the channel grow. I've been Chris from Totally EV, take care and bye bye.